This week on the Round Robin Comic Podcast, who are you going to call? Welcome everybody to the Round Robin Comic Book Podcast, where we discuss one old comic and one new comic. This week we'll be discussing the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters and the Hawkman special number one from 1986. All right. Who here's a huge Ghostbusters fan? Ah, nah. Nah. They're all right. Nah, they're all right. <laughs> you like the new one or the old one? The, the, the new one has a feminist agenda. <laughs> I will say, I I was when we watched it over at your old house. I was like, I didn't want to. I didn't want to watch it. I was pleasantly. Neither did I. But I, I was, was pleasant, like, pleasantly surprised. But like all things, like give me like two minutes and I'll change my mind on it, it and I'll watch something. Chris Hemsworth made the movie for me. He helped it. Yeah. I, th- I thought they did a good job of the gals I got to play. Kind of yeah, they played picked, off they of picked, each other. They well. picked a uh, what's her name? Uh, McKibben? McCarthy? No. No. Uh, she played Egon's character. Um, Kate. Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. She's freaking hilarious. So we've been collecting the figures from that, just like yeah. if I can find them around and. Her figure is, like, super expensive now. It's the most expensive one because she's the best one out of all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, why? Yeah. This movie failed. This toy should be, like, $3. But, to get back on topic here, the Ghostbusters 35th anniversary follows the tale of Ray, Egon, Pete. You're not going to do it like what they did in the movie? Doh! Ray Egon <laughs> and the token black guy Winston. All right, guys, what'd you think? Now I used to read this series um, with these particular characters. I know I'm saying these particular characters because they've done a number of different Ghostbuster series based off the cartoon and based off of uh, the new Ghostbusters, and then they did like this other Ghostbusters thing. I, I don't even know how to describe. Uh, these are by far the my favorite Ghostbusters. I can hear the voices of these characters. Yeah. They word things cr- the appropriate way that you could picture them saying in the movie very easily. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I think it's this creative team, uh, Burnham and Shoning and yeah. Delgado. I think I think that series was, you know, I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah. They they, I think they do a really good job with these characters. In making it entertaining and funny. Um, this is a one shot. So, yeah. it, you know, you don't have to know anything beforehand or after or whatever. And so you can go out and pick it up pretty easily. But uh, I thought the story was really good on this for being a one shot. And it seemed like it was a little bit longer than a standard book. Yeah. It was probably for the same price. Yeah. That, that was nice. You get a bigger book and it's still four bucks. Yep. So, I haven't watched the movie in a while. Is Pete Bankman always like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, they, they, now, we talked about last issue, like, they did, like, their research on, like, the old Justice League of America, or Justice League International. These guys did their research on Ghostbusters. Like, they got their characters down. They got their speech down. Yeah. Like, even when Ray is, like, pontificating about ghosts and stuff, and it's just like, you can just you can hear, hear the Dan meter a- in his can, voice. You can ha- hear Dan Aykroyd's voice mm-hmm. talking about it. Yeah. 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 There is one thing I don't like. Some like sometimes in the artwork their lips look like ducks. Yes. Like, yeah, I can see that. Later on in the book and her it's like her mouth is like three inches out of her face. I don't like how the how they drew poor Winston either. He's all mouth. Yeah, he looks <laughs> like a stereotype <laughs> out of him. But no, I that's the only complaint I have. The whole series before this was great. Um, I really want to get the graphic novels, especially the the big compendiums, the ones that collect like volumes one through four and five through nine and stuff like that. I just don't want to spend fifty bucks on a comic book. Probably not. Don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. I think my biggest complaint on it was they vanquished the bad guy because it's a one shot, and all of a sudden you see this bigger bad guy coming. Yeah. And then it's done. Yeah, yeah. It's done. It, 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 he just hands it over. Yeah, it's like, oh, here you go, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, and they carry on the story from the movies pretty well. 
where, you know, they got to take care of any damage or pay for any damage. So they're getting contracts where as long as they don't do too much damage, damage they're in they the get, clear. They get a bonus they get a for not doing damage. Yeah. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. There's one part where they're jumping in Decto 1 and they're tearing out and they almost hit a guy. Yep. <laughs> The siren doesn't give you guys any actual authority. Yep. <laughs> Loved it. I was laughing really hard on and that one. And then the guy's like, dude, breathe, man. <laughs> they pull a fire alarm to empty uh, the subway system and yeah. fire department shows up. Because they were expecting a fire to be broken out because of the using the proton packs on them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, what's going to happen? The fire's going to happen down here anyway. And you do get to see a shirtless Egon for those wondering what he might look like. Without a shirt. Does he have an eight-pack like cable? No. Oh, wow. I just noticed uh, they actually have the painting from... Of Vigo? Yes. Uh Yep. Yeah, I saw that. Two. Yep. It's Vigo. I actually like that movie. The second one? I watched it again, like, recently. Yeah. When I was a little kid, I was like, this is not Ghostbusters. Now I'm like, okay, it's just a different genre, because... I liked it too. I'm First one was lie. an adventure movie, and this one is a science fiction movie. Yep, I'm not gonna lie. I like the second one too. I do like the second one. Every time I see the guy that uh, the curator, or whatever he was, yeah. Every yeah. time I see him in anything, I'm like, that's the guy from Ghostbusters too. Yeah. Where are you from? Up of that side. Up of that side. Now the thing is, this is going to be like a. There's four one shots throughout the month. So this was the first one shot. The next one's actually the real Ghostbusters that based off the cartoon. Um, reason they had to call it the real Ghostbusters is because... because of copyright issues. The copyright issues of the Ghostbusters from way back in the 50s with starring Larry Storch. In the 60s. Yep. 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 With the gorilla. Yep. <laughs> um, so the artwork and the story is a little bit different because it's a different uh, writing and drawing team. Uh, but this this one... I definitely recommend you pick up, go yeah. back and check out the rest of the series. It was fun all the way through. Um, they actually even did one where they ended up going to doing like a worldwide Ghostbusters tour where they're in other countries and things like that way back when too. All of them fantastic reads. Did you know that they're doing ads for Marvel in here? Yeah, ID. I didn't. IDW and Marvel, Marvel have a pair up. Oh, do they? Yeah, so IDW will actually publish some of their Marvel's children's stuff. Okay. So you'll see that kind of happening. Um, but yeah, that threw me off initially, too. But yeah. uh, that's what it, that's what it's all about. And they get to put their tag on it, and they're going to make some money off of it. So that's, that's good. Yeah, the Marvel Action Series. That's what it was. So let's rate it. Five being incredibly awesome and one a steaming pile of shit how would you guys rate it i'm gonna give it a four you're gonna give it a four because of the resolution i mean they just give up the tablet to poseidon and then it's over it's like i want more yeah yeah okay i I think i i'm gonna go uh four as well i i feel the same way nick does um the ending was a little bit of a letdown but i really enjoyed the rest of that book can we give it negative no, just kidding. I give it a five. It's my first Ghostbusters book, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the ending kind of stank, but I liked it a lot. It was good for a one shot. Yeah, it's a good one shot. Yeah. So next up, we have Hawkman Special from back in '86. Uh, this was a follow up to uh, a four part mini series of Hawkman. Nick, you remember what the name of it was? The Shadow War of Hawkman. That's right, Shadow War of Hawkman. With this particular book, I, I'm a big Hawkman fan. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm slowly becoming one. Um, I'm just He interests me. Yeah, it's just a character that I've always enjoyed in whatever car- uh, incarnation he comes back in. Um, I like that he, he, he's lived many lives. Yes. I like that part. And then he's an archaeologist in our time. Uh, with this one, they actually break, it's a full thicker book, so they break it down into different parts so you can actually, um, understand what's all happening and when it's kind of transitioning over and everything. Um, Hawkman's having nightmares, essentially, um, about 
the plant or people about, from his planet that died. About yeah, he was responsible for a whole ship of Thanagarians getting deceased. I guess is the yeah. best way of putting yeah. it. Um, they were on the way to destroy Detroit, and he destroyed their ship. He made them dead. I it's been a while since I read that one, so I was trying to remember how, what actually happened. But I know they made reference to it. That one book that actually made reference to something that happened previously, so you knew what was happening. My favorite part of this, honestly, is Gentleman Ghost. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have always liked him as a character for Hawkman. He's usually got something going on, but there's that fine line where he's kind of maybe a good guy, kind of a bad bad guy. guy. It's gray area. It's It's like a Catwoman thing, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, It's nice to see that from a villain opposed to being just a straight out villain constantly. He does remind you of the shade from Starman. He does. He does. Very much. Yeah. Like, you, you, yeah. James Robinson probably was like, oh, I need a character like the Gentleman Ghost. So I'm going to make the shade. And they did get into the history of the Gentleman Ghost a little bit, kind of explaining where he came from and how that all came about, um, which was very interesting in itself. Uh, but the whole issue is basically how Hawkman is dealing with uh, the death of these individuals, and how does he get the ghosts from stop haunting him so he can sleep? He's not able to sleep because of this ish- this problem. He's got a severe case of PTSD. Um, he relies on his wife um, to help him figure out how to meditate. Mm-hmm. And uh, he goes to this, the vol? The vol. The vol. Yeah. And meditates there and finds out how he can help these individuals and each of them needed something different there was an actress that uh just wanted to act one more time i read a synopsis of the story like the the reason why she couldn't act anymore and i will say i don't ever want to read it it sounds so bad really like uh what was was that in because this is all this is the (laughs) only (laughs) nice catch only point she's in they make a reference to her a little bit later, but that's about it. There is a... They keep bringing up some kind of plague, right? Some kind of Thanagarian, Thanagarian equalizing plague, right? So it is a disease which had the entire populace regress to the mean, robbing the world of all creativity and innovation. The plague was cured by old league nemesis Hyathus, who then was ruler of Thanagar. So it was just this plague where they couldn't become creative anymore. Hmm. That boy, um, I don't want to read yeah, that. Yeah, I don't, no, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't sound uh, interesting. I'm sure I probably have read it because I think I've read almost everything Hawkman. But uh, yeah, boils down to he helps these individuals pass on, essentially. Uh, is warned that he needs to make sure that he's still concerned about his home planet as well as his second home, Earth, and uh, leaves it with Gentleman Ghost kind of rubbing his hands together and going, I got got him where I want him now. And this is supposed to lead into the 1987 series of Hawkman. I believe it's the second series. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then this is pre-crisis, too. It is pre-crisis. Um, they do make a couple of references. What's Crisis? Infinity Crisis. All right. So, uh, DC was having problems figuring out, like, oh, well, we have, we have to figure out how we have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all these characters from the Golden Age still appearing in Modern Age. So they they did this twelve issue miniseries where they destroyed all the alternate worlds and they created them into one. Mm -hmm. I won't borrow it after I borrow this one. (laughs) Okay. There's a whole series of these Infinity books. Yeah. Well, they they keep doing it like every other year now. Oh, do like, they? Oh, they're going to re- reboot this, so reboot that, nothing, reboot it's this? it's nothing special anymore? They do make reference. In, it, it, the original stuff's really good. Um, was it this one that they made reference to the Flash in? Mm-hmm. Like the Flash disappeared. We don't know where he is. I wish I wouldn't have told him or kicked him out of the league. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they make it a reference to that point. Let's see if I can find it here. It's where Barry Allen bites the dust. And in, they introduce Captain Adam and Blue Beetle to the DC Universe. And they 
So yeah, they even reference this special uh, curse before Crisis on Infinity Earths. Um, talked about how Flash killed the Reverse Flash. Right. That, look at how long though that storyline was. Three twenty four to three thirty. <laughs> Six issues. Fantastic. Yeah. No, I'm just like I said. I'm trying to up my DC knowledge because yeah. I'm a Marvel fan. You're going to be confused with Hawkman, though. Hawkman's going to mess you up. Okay. Because it, it was weird to see Katara Hall on there. And yeah. I'm just so used to like, okay, well, he's Carter Hall. Yeah. And then he became Katar Hall again. And then he became Carter Hall again. And then he became... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Shiera was Shiera, and then Shiera became... Shiera? Yeah. Who cares? Okay. Who cares? All right. So, so is that why they called it the Infinity Gauntlet? In Marvel, they were doing something to keep up with Infinity Crisis. Well, no. In the original, it was Crisis on Infinite Earths. Okay. And then later, after Infinity Gauntlet for Marvel, probably about 10 years ago, they made in- Infinite Crisis, which yeah. made absolutely no sense. No sense. Okay. Um, so I was in... I was Kendra. In, Kendra. Her name is Kendra. Yeah. I was in Krypton the other day. And Infinity Gauntlet, which I owned almost all of those comics when I was younger. They're selling the whole thing for 125 bucks. Yep. I'm like, I'm just going to go out and hang myself. Because of all these comic books I had and I got rid of because I didn't think they were going to be worth anything. And that's just the way the mar- the it's all based off the movies. Everybody, yeah. Anytime anything gets brought up as even possibly happening, it flies through the roof. Hmm. Darkhawk? Yeah. Darkhawk. And that was all because a toy came out yep. with the <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy 2 characters. Yeah. Um, Quasar did the same thing a little bit. Uh, I had Quasar. I liked Quasar. The appearance of Binary in the X-Men books jumped yep. up through the roof because uh. of Captain Marvel. <laughs> Ouch. The one that stings for me is the first appearance of Gambit. Yeah, I was looking at that today on com- my comic book shop, and it was between a thousand dollars and five hundred dollars. You can usually find one a little bit cheaper if you're not looking for a great co- condition. Yeah, I had I had a near mint condition. Yeah, <laughs> it's like god damn it. Yeah, I don't know. I, there's a lot of books that I like. I've sold, and I'm just like, why did I sell that? But, yeah, yeah, just. If I would not have sold any of those things, I would have, like, no room for anything else. True. That's true. But it just, just when I flip through and I'm like, God damn it, why did I sell that one? No, not serious. I'm just like, why did I sell that one? Why did I get rid of that? Yeah, just because of all that speculation, a lot of that stuff's going through the roof. Yeah. Um, anytime anything gets even vaguely mentioned, uh, it has the Walking Dead effect, yeah. essentially. Everybody thinks it's going to do exactly what The Walking Dead did. Well, the reason Walking Dead's so valuable is because they didn't print a crap ton of it. Yeah. Um, so your best bet if you're looking at speculation is if you happen to get a copy, flipping it within the first week and making any money off of it. Because I guarantee it's not going to stay that way. No, because there's like the first appearance of Psylocke when I bought it. It was worth close to 100 and now it's worth like nine. Yeah. You know, it dropped that bad. And I'm like, well, okay. So, it, yeah, I'm, I'm learning about the speculation part of it. I didn't know that was all what it was. Yeah. It's, there's actually even some websites out there that just, they announce this stuff. And you see people go storming to the stores to pick up those issues. And then if it's an issue that you actually care about because you want to enjoy the story, you can't find it. Nope. Nope. I was looking. Yeah, at, I'm not going to be able to finish my Captain Marvel run. You know, I was the old Jim Starlin here. I can't, I can't find them. I was thinking about not for what I used to pay for them. About doing the X Men run from like 150 to to two two eighty. The most sought after ones. You know, like pretty much the whole Claremont. Yep. And I can't touch any of them. Not right now. I can't. I can't justify purchasing most of them. So that's why I'm looking at trades. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because 
because I'm not owning them because they're worth money. I'm owning them because I love the stories. Right. You know, and I like reading the stories every once in a while. Like, I'm like, oh, I want to read the Dark Phoenix saga. I haven't read it for a while, so I'll go back and I'll grab it and I'll read it. Just go back and pick up all the classic X-Men books. Yeah. Just, yeah, the classic, classic well, series. What is it? The Essential X-Men number two has both Days of Futures Past and the Dark Phoenix saga in it. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to go out and buy the Dark Phoenix saga again. I can just read it. Yeah. So. All right. So. We're going to rate this. <clears throat> we didn't rate the last one. but We're going to start rating the old ones too. So one thing that I thought was cool about this one was um, that the Gentleman Ghost is actually trying to save Earth yes, from right. the Thanagarians. Yes. Yeah. You're just like, oh, he's just putting them on, you know. He's like, because that's who he is. You just you don't know if you're going to trust him or not. So, and at the end of the book, he ends up being the hero of the book. Yep. Which is really weird. Yeah. Um. I actually did a little bit of research on the Gentleman Ghost. So they've actually been at each other since the 1940s, and they actually, um, uh, what's his name, Gentleman Ghost, uh. What is his last name? I can't. I'm blanking. <laughs> Craddock. Craddock. Jim Craddock. Yeah. Jim Craddock. Okay. He actually met one of the incarnations of Hawkman and Hot Girl back in the Western days when it was. Uh, oh, yep. Cinnamon and Blackhawk's not right. A cinnamon? I can't remember what. Was she a stripper? Nighthawk? Was she a stripper? Something probably like was like Nighthawk. Was she a stripper? No. Just red hair. So she's called Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Nice. Which was okay. a Western. Okay. And <laughs> that's where he met them originally. And through from that point on, they have been kind of at each other for, for through that. And I thought that was kind of interesting because I didn't realize how long the character had been around. Um, he was actually introduced back in... But he was like introduced in like a... One of the older... Uh, Silver Age things. I can't. I'm blank. That's all right. It's all right. It's all right, man. But like the continuity for, like the halls, right? So it's just weird. Um, <laughs> there, like <laughs> their son, Daniel. Goes to the dream world, okay, with Morpheus, in like the Sandman book, right? Like, like Morpheus, like Matrix he ends Morpheus? up being the next Sandman, who ends up being the next Doctor Fate, right? Right. Okay. So it's just I like, know who Doctor Fate is. There you go. All right, but the, it's just a weird story. Like Flash Comics eighty eight from nineteen forty seven. Okay, that's a long time to be at each other's throats. I wanted to say it was like all stars. <clears throat> he doesn't look like he's aged a day. Hawkman doesn't look like he's aged a day, though. Well, when you he's reincarnate probably, every couple of... <laughs> he's probably died a couple times. Decades, yeah. You going to do a grinds our gears here, Ryan? Or, well, we, or we want to keep How long going? did it take it to re- you to read this? This took me 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, I took that. the time to read, you know, pay attention, and make sure I'm not cut, missing anything. Ten minutes, Cliff's notes. <laughs> no, it took me about twenty twenty five minutes to read it, which is, you know, it's nice because it was a, is it annual or is it just a special? It's, a special. it's just a special. Okay. Um, but I mean, it was just detailed storytelling. He's not truly a hero in this book. Yeah, that's that. He's that's just trying to a little bit. But it was a nice take of something different. Um, where he had actually control his anger a little bit and uh, make basically inner peace with himself. Why are you uh, so angry, Hawkman? <laughs> so I, I, you know, I do enjoy this book a lot. Um, I've enjoyed all the Hawkman series, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in the Grinder Gears here in a minute. Um, <laughs> do we want to do we want to do a rating on this? Sure. You ready? Um I'm going to give it about a 6. 
Out of five? No. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot we were going five, <laughs> not ten. All right. Um, three. I'll I was wondering three. what you were going to rate it because you're obviously the newest one to the Hawkman world. Yeah. Okay. I'll go three because I'm not quite sure about I don't know much about the character yet. So I'm going to give it four. Um, not because of, you know, um, I just can't grade anything a five yet. We haven't read anything that's a five yet. Um, there's parts of it that was just like, okay, I get it. Keep going. Just stop bringing this up again and again and again. Just get yeah. there. Um, they brought up twice that he needs to meditate. <laughs> and he's like, I'm a cop. I don't meditate. And then they bring it up again. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. You're like, that's your defining moment for Shiara is that you're saying that, yeah, you'll believe her mumbo jumbo. And then he does believe it and then he saves the day, apparently. I think I go about a three on it as well. Um, like I said, it's not your standard him being a superhero. Uh, so there's parts that dragged a little bit. But it was nice to see that other side of him a little bit, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My uh, Grind Your Gears, What Grinds My Gears, has nothing to do with what we read. It's about my quest this week that I took to find backer boards for modern age comic books. Apparently, I went to Krypton and all they had was Golden Age. Legend was out, so I went to Ground Zero in Ralston, and they had an extra box because they over-ordered. And he's like, yeah, there's a shortage going on right now. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I didn't, okay, um, I should have bought two then. <laughs> Every once in a while they go through a shortage of Do they? backing boards. There's like something with the shipping right now that's causing a problem. Okay. But yeah, everybody's trying to track down bags and boards. And yeah. And it was because I needed them for the modern age. Yep. So the modern stuff. I have plenty of golden age and silver age stuff. I just don't have. I didn't the have modern any, age. The backing. I had the bags, but I didn't have the boards. Mm -hmm. So I had to go around driving around town to find them. Got lucky. So Nick. Um, grinds my gears. Um, speculator market. All right. So that's. Okay, so back in the day, I was trying to get the Miracle Man graphic novels from Comico. And they, at the time, this was like 2000, maybe 2001, they were going for 500 to $300 a piece. Ouch. I found them at Planet Comic Con for $15 oh, and yeah, $20. That's right. Yeah, we did. Yeah, he did. He and I like, didn't buy them. And you didn't buy them. Because <laughs> I don't care anymore. You don't care. Yeah, you were like, I remember you're looking at them and you're like, holy shit. <laughs> like back in the day, this was expensive. Yep. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think um, you guys ruined the, the fun of wanting to get comics for collecting them. Collecting, yeah. Um, just because um, Batwoman shows up in an episode of The Flash does not make a reason for everybody to run out to a store and pick up Batwoman comics. Unless you like Batwoman, not running out there to get something yeah. that you think in the future is going to be worth money. Yeah, I agree. I, I, it's taken the fun out of collecting when I look at some of the prices for stuff, and I'm like, are you are you even buying these just or because you like them, or are you buying them because you know you can flip them and make money off of them? I'm not going to lie. It frustrates me, too. Um, but being associated with a comic shop, I, yeah, I also understand it to an so extent. So you're the man? You're the man in this episode, this, this <laughs> podcast? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the market for comic books, we, you honestly don't see a lot of young kids coming in. Yeah. I think at one point we were all anxiously running to the first spinner rack we could find and buying anything that we could because we just wanted to read it. Yep. Uh, Kevin Smith has even said that he read kids at his school brought in comic books and he got into it because he was reading them or was it Jay? I can't remember who said it, but they were read. He was borrowing those books and reading them from his friends because he didn't have enough access to those. Yeah. Um, and so I think our feelings on that are right there. That's why, because, you know, we were trying to go back and 
pick up stuff that we wanted to see when we, we were younger read, and wanted or... to read. But like I said, nowadays you're not seeing that younger market coming in anymore. It's yeah. adults that are coming in. And sadly, if we want to make keep making this industry keep going, yeah, we're going to, I mean, we have to rely on the speculators to help with that a little bit because yeah. they're, they're the ones that are buying. Maybe it's just because I pick difficult runs of comic books that I want to try to collect is what it is. But, you know, you know, I want to collect, I, at one point I had the entire X Factor run, the original first 70 comic books. Sure. And it was funny. You could find those in like the half price books. Yeah. Those are probably, section those are for probably, 25 cents. Those are probably mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought them. Cause I had to, cause I had to sell them cause I needed money. You know, yep. but that that was a that was a group and a series that I really loved and was close. I kept one, I kept the first appearance of Apocalypse. Nice, uh, seven or six, six. So I kept that because I knew that it was the first appearance of one of my favorite villains. But the others, I just and I'm like, now I'm trying to go back and I want to buy them again, but I don't know why because I read all the way through them and it's just a fond memory that you have is, and you yep. want to enjoy it again. Yep. I've got bought a plenty of books that I remember reading as a kid that are absolutely horrible. Yeah, I've read and some. Power I pack. still want the oh, power pack. <laughs> we should do power pack number one. That would be the first time and maybe the only time I would ever read a power pack. <laughs> they do team up with the Punisher though. We could do that. The power pack, power or pack we could read the, uh, the power pack versus saber <sighs> <sighs> So, but yeah, I get it. it. It if we don't have the speculators, we won't have a market. A market for, for the books. Yeah. You know, I I feel like I'm sort of cursed. It seems like any time I get really interested in a character, all of a sudden something comes out about that character and then you're trying to track down books for that character. Deadpool. Uh Darkhawk. Deadpool for me. <laughs> Darkhawk. Yeah. I ended up spending 40 bucks on Darkhawk number 1. I should have not had to spend $40 on Darkhawk number 1. I had the rest of the run, but I wanted that one book. Yeah. All right. So Howard the Duck. Look at that, what happened to him after the movie came out. Look at uh, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. That was a quarter box book for decades. Yeah. You could get all four of them for a dollar. You and how much them. are they right now? Yeah. You could get all those new mutant comic books after the first appearance of Gable for one, two bucks. Yeah. And now it's, you can't even touch them. Um. Yeah, that that was the one with Warlock, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, even I think issue twenty or twenty one now is going through the roof because of uh, some character in it. I can't remember which one, but I mean, is it Daniel Moonstar? It might be. Okay. Uh, and then New Mutants. What is it? Annual two. Uh, with Braddock in it. Betsy Braddock. Okay. And she's. First referred to as Psylocke, maybe? I can't remember. But, uh, yeah. Part of it, you you gotta admit, it's kind of nice. You see a book that you own going through the roof, but then you're cursing them for the books that you don't own and you wanted to own. Yeah, there's some of them, like Iron Man number 100. I have 98, 99, and 100, and I'm like, yeah. Because 100 is worth, even in the condition I have it, it's worth a decent amount you know? sure so but no i i do agree with you nick speculators frustrate me to no end but i i also see the reality of it of well you're in we the business it. of selling comics not buying them you not know? buying them yeah so yeah us two are the buyers and you're the man <laughs> <laughs> i i read just as many as you guys I, trust i me. know i'm just playing <laughs> around man my <laughs> wife actually wishes i didn't get as many well, you're yeah. lucky that the movie for Green Lantern failed. You are. Because, can you imagine you, trying to collect all those? Did you like it? That was really good. Did you like it? The movie? Yeah. Um, I've gotten over it. Let me put it that way. I'm not um, going to lie. I liked it. I went, I was, so, Krypton, knowing I was a big Green Lantern fan, hooked me up with sneak peek, peek passes. Nice. June fifteenth, two thousand eleven. Exarvin. Remember the date? Oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember this. I was so stoked. Uh, went in to see it. Um, 
I left disappointed because it felt like they took what could have been easily three movies and crammed it into one okay, movie. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Now, with that being said, I went back and I bought the DVD the first day it came out, everything too. I've watched it again several times. I don't think it's as bad. Knowing, you know, mm-hmm. I still wish they did it in three movies. Yeah, you I know? agree. This is how he got his powers. He's fighting Hector Hammond. Then the Parallax and then Sinestro or vice versa. I don't care. Yeah. But you could have made three movies out of that easily and developed something instead of cramming everything into one thing. Yeah. Um, so you're, t- you're saying that DC screwed the pooch. I think they could have done it better, yes. Okay. But, uh, you know, I now I do appreciate it. I enjoy it. I'm not going to lie that I do enjoy it now. But, yeah, it's still my little bit of my frustration on that. Yeah, I can see that. What do you think of it, Nick? Okay, so my, for just a movie, my interpretation of it was Hal Jordan is a giant stick in the mud, right? Yeah. He does not have a sense of humor. No, and at they all. Had, and they had Ryan Reynolds be Hal Jordan. If if Ryan Reynolds played Guy Gardner, it'd be so much more made more sense. Okay, because he is Guy Gardner. Yeah, the smart mouth. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, but you know, um, that's just my my view on it okay like i think they 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 also mixed him a lot with kyle rayner like i think that's why i kind of appreciated it a little bit like he's not that imaginative no he's not going to make a giant gatling gun no or a he's hot gonna, wheels track he's gonna make a bat <laughs> yeah or a he's gonna make baseball a glove. baseball glove yeah. or yeah he's not gonna do yeah. all that he's not okay gonna... after reading justice league international i i can see that it would it should have been guy gardner because <laughs> He, he kind of pissed me off in that book. I wanted to kick his ass. Yeah, a guy does tend to annoy everyone. But uh, that's why I think people like him. You know, uh, I've never been a big John Stewart fan. Yeah. Um, For a whole generation, though, John Stewart is Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. For, no, absolutely. Just like your first one was, you know, Kyle. Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, mine was Hal, but that's because I purposely went out and bought one with Hal in it but yeah i like kyle kyle's one of my favorites and i'm starting to kind of like guy gardner especially when they made him into this like oh gee shucks guy at the end of that book when he gets brain damage yeah when he yeah. gets brain damage that was awesome see and with john stewart i had no idea he actually <clears throat> even existed I, mean, I saw the this black green lantern in a justice league unlimited toy pack i'm like who's this i've never even you know, my because I was first introduced to Green Lantern via the Super Friends or yep. Superpowers or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Yep. And I always loved the Green Lantern character because he could create whatever he wanted. Mm-hmm. I started reading when Kyle came on. Okay. And so I've always kind of been a Kyle Hal guy. And uh, then one day I decided that I needed to have every Green Lantern comic ever produced. Um, I've been through that phase too. <laughs> and I went back and I started getting them and, uh, you know, I ran across that John Stewart issue and they've drastically adjusted him from the political stances that he had into more of a, uh, ex-military architecture guy, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, so I, I know can nothing appreciate about that. John Stewart either. So yeah, it, and they've made it. So each character has their own personality, their own design when they're cre- using stuff with the ring like you'll notice guy doesn't do a whole lot with creating anything he just beats the crap out of everybody using the power that way where hal's more of like kind of a game plan kind of guy john stewart everything he does is molded and built and designed and then kyle he's an artist so everything so is going to be the most imaginative imaginative right use. so it's very interesting to see uh, how they've done that. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to go on a Green Lantern tangent. No, no, <laughs> no go ahead, because uh, you were the one who was worried you wouldn't be able to do this, so go for it, man. <laughs> Just go on your tangent. No, I... You know, the they've done so much with these characters over the years. I'm still trying to figure out how they can still make more Green Lanterns for 2814. Uh, because they're up to seven or eight. Eight, well, eight now if you count Jade. 
at one point. Um, right. Well, no nine if you count Alan. So. <laughs> well, he doesn't really count, does he? No, uh, no, different powers. But, and every other sector has two Green Lanterns from all over these planets that are in this sector. But the original four, they call actually in one issue recently, they called themselves the Four Horsemen. Because... Nice wrestling reference. There. It was a fantastic ref- reference. They had the picture of them all ready to go into battle and take on this ba- big bad. It was amazing. And some of the stories have been horrible. Some of them have been fantastic. Uh, when Jeff Johns took over is when I really fell back in love with it. He did a great job with it. And, you know, with this new series, it's been an interesting one. He's becoming more of a detective type or undercover agent type deal so who's the lantern in the new one it's hal it's hal again yeah it's hal again john's in the justice league oh i forgot about nort how did i forget about nort how can you forget about nort <laughs> everybody forgets about nort no he's like one of my favorites <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> well is he he's not really well i guess and he was chip. a lantern for 2814 yeah and chip chip yeah oh. um simon baz uh, come on you know you love a green lantern with a gun that was the only intriguing part about him. I love, you know, even with Jessica Cruz, I wasn't even really crazy about her initially. And then they gave her this, you know, she's got this self doubt about herself. So she has a hard time kind of focusing. And once the anxiety kicks in, she can't create or anything like that. And they've done a really good job of developing that character. And I've fallen in love with that character, but Simon, yeah, Baez, they've never done much with him. They really should. I'd love to see him expand a little bit. I think he's actually been kind of like uh, semi-retired now, I guess. They've made reference a couple of times that he's still on Earth kind of hanging out, but he's not appearing in anything. Um, Jessica we moved over to Justice League Odyssey. Um, John Stewart's in Justice League. Can't remember where Guy's at. Kyle's doing uh, Titans right now. And then Hal's got Green Lantern. It's just been such a great read throughout. And I can go back and read those at any point and just study them because it's such a fascinating character to me. So I love the Green Lantern too. What would you recommend of the Kyle Rayner books? Because all mine I've read is Hal Jordan. Uh, Definitely, I think it's issue 48 is his first appearance. And then the first story arc, I think it's 50, 51 through 54, maybe 53, somewhere in there. That's probably his most famous story arc because of Major Force. Okay. And then um, the Blackest Night stuff, he kind of, during that whole Sinestro Core Wars, Blackest Night stuff was fantastic. Uh, you got a little bit of all of them, but he's one of the few lanterns that's actually, he's the White Lantern. Uh, okay. So he's like the all the good in the universe kind of thing. So he's white braid. Um, Boring. And then, oddly enough, Tom King's Omega Men. Okay. Fantastic read. And he's the primary character in that. I was going to say, like, not the old one, right? No. Because that was horrible. No, this okay. new, the new one. Uh, I don't have much background on Omega Men, but this Tom King did an amazing job with this. It's with the Omega Men, and Kyle shows up, and you're left at the end of going what just happened where what's going on next okay what year is the the, the green lantern ones the those are going to be the mid 90s mid 90s mm-hmm. yeah the first cover he's on is 51 uh but i think his first appearance was 48 because i think 49's where 48's the one where Hawkeye or uh, green arrow and how on the cover i believe Okay. I mean, I'm just going off of memory, so. <laughs> All right, I'll check it out. So, what grinded your gears about this? You had something you wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah, before I went on the rant. Until right. you, went on, you went on your Green Lantern <laughs> and, uh, tangent. Anytime, I'm happy to talk about Green Lantern. All right, so I am a Hawkman fan, but the mythos of Hawkman drives me insane. Um, been reincarnated half a dozen times at least, come back with a bunch of different names. Uh, Nick mentioned quite a few of them. Um, 
you know, Jeff Johns came on and tried to fix it. And he did a valiant job, just didn't quite make it there. Kind of went back into the whole messy universe world kind of thing. However, Robert Vendetti is writing the new Hawkman, and he is doing it right. He's got it figured out. He knows how to have them kind of cross worlds uh, where they're just Hawkmen from different worlds, essentially. And they're combining, and Carter Hall is hopping from world to world and learning information from each of these because he has these memories of them. He even met uh, his predecessor off of Krypton. Which um, I'm I'm reading that one right the series right now, so I'm going to enjoy that. Then, sorry, I didn't mean to give anything away. No, but it's all right. It's, it's all right. It's just fascinating what he's doing with it, and uh, it's nice to see they're actually fixing it because this is an amazing character that deserves a lot more than every time you start a new series, we're going to make him have a different background thing. I think there was even one in the '90s where it was a completely different guy and then somewhere around issue 25 or 26 or something it turned into carter hall and you're sitting there going i huh uh-huh. so that's what you mean by it's gonna mess with me then yeah uh, i think by reading the new series first it's going to help you feel a little more comfortable going back into that old stuff okay but it it took me a very long time to try to understand everything um And, I mean, they've made a very good effort to try and combine all that stuff, but it just was not, they couldn't find a good way to do it, and Robert Vendetti's pulling it off. Cool. I'm going to keep reading that series, then. Yeah, because then, uh, after Zero Hour, they brought him back as Katar Hall again, and he had metal wings, like Archangel. Archangel. Yeah. Um, He also had a lot of, like, he had a lot of tassels, and he carried around a guitar, which was pretty funny. Because they were just like, hey, that's a, a weapon. We're just going to name him after this. We're going to have him carry one. And you can't forget about Hawk World, which is still another Hawkman title, just based off on uh, based off on Thing Thangorian. Uh huh. Thangorians. Yeah. Um, where he's this a cop there. That's how he becomes buddies with Adam, Str- uh, Adam Strange. Adam Strange. Yeah. And I thought that was a great read, but it if you're trying to understand the backstory you're going to get lost very easily okay i'm thoroughly enjoying this i've read, I've read four issue th- two ish, three issues of the new one i've read 10 one and two i just bought three i'm buying these all on comiXology right, right. now so unlike aquaman who can't talk to fish yeah hawkman can talk to birds he can talk to birds he has a when they came to the i plant, thought aquaman can no talk to fish he can command fish Oh. He can't carry he can't, on conversations. He can't ask them questions. I mean, what's a fish going to say? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. Because fish have a memory hi. of two seconds. Yeah. Hi. Well, apparently bees can talk to dolphins, so why so, not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> my friend Pat gave me Aquaman on Voodoo. Good. And Bumblebee. So I'm gonna we're gonna watch Aquaman this weekend with Piper. Nice. So okay. You can we can talk about that later. Once I watch yeah, it next next week. I haven't watched it yet either. Once I watched, I wasn't. I was like, I can't red box it. I just, I was gonna wait, and then I got. He's like, uh, you uh, own Aquaman and Bumblebee yet? I'm like, Bumblebee's out now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no. Did you see it? Nope, not yet. You don't think I'm over without your wife and your daughter? And you'll You'll have to tell Bumblebee. me how that one is. I'm I'm interested in that one. Um, you know, I don't, I don't. The thing that bugs me is Bumblebee had the most iconic voice. One of the most iconic voices from the Transformers cartoon. Yes. Yep. And he still doesn't have a voice box. I know. It sucks. Even in this one, he doesn't have a voice box. Have You You haven't seen it, though. No. But I'm but pretty he talks through the, the yeah, radio yeah, in the commercials. I don't like that either. I'd see that more as like a, a sound wave or... A, right. Yeah. What's the, the uh, boom box for the, trans, or the good guys? Uh, not Perceptor. Perceptor is the... Magnifying the glass. Magnifying yeah. glass. What was what what the boombox for the Autobots? The Autobots, yeah. Oh, I should know this because right now somebody's screaming at their their phone. <laughs> yeah, I should know this because I'm that was my favorite. That was my cartoon. Yeah, it was one of my favorites too. I. But they turned him into a Volkswagen, though, so that's cool. Pat yeah. and my mom said it was good. 
Yeah. But Blaster. Also, Blaster. 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 Nice. You're reserving judgment for Aquaman to tell me how you felt about it? Yeah. Okay. I'll watch just, it and then. I just wish it was Namor. Well, I, I was calling it Water Thor. Now they can't make Namor. They can't. Because DC did it first. Damn it. Well, they still could, but Marvel doesn't own the rights to them. I can't remember what company has them. It's some off company. Yeah. But still, they, they were like, well, we could. We, we want to make a Namor, but DC even, just made Aquaman, so even it would though, be like we were following them. Even even though Namor like other was, character. was yeah. out before. But you got to realize nobody knows that. No. It's kind of like the whole Shazam thing. Yeah. So, all right. I'll give you my feelings about Aquaman next Monday. Okay. So uh, that's going to do it for this week. Read more comics. Follow us on Twitter. What's the Twitter handle? Is it Beyond Super One? Are we going to yep. keep that one, or are we going to make another one? We can make another one. Okay. For right now, for right now, just follow us on Beyond Super One. We have a Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook. Follow Beyond Supernatural Podcast. It'll all be in the liner notes. Yep. In the show notes. We'll so. Put it in the notes. See you guys. Talk to you guys next week. This has been Kirk. Kirk. Ryan. Bye. Bye.